The observance of the five precepts has its positive counterpart. That is to develop virtues that ennoble our heart and mind. We cultivate our virtues by observing the precepts. We refrain from killing to cultivate loving kindness and compassion. We refrain from stealing to develop non-greed and generosity. We refrain from sexual misconduct to develop contentment and faithfulness to loved ones. We refrain from untruthful communication or lying to develop truthfulness. There are some aspects of wholesome communication. We speak the truth, say what is pleasant, speak with kindness to benefit others, and speak at an appropriate time. We speak words that do not cause remorse or hurt to another. We refrain from intoxicating drugs and liquor to develop mindfulness. So before acting by body, speech or mind, we reflect, will this action be harmful to me or to others or to both? Will the action bring suffering and regret? If the action is negative, avoid doing it. Reflect again after an action has been performed. Consider if it has produced suffering. If it had been harmful, avoid repeating it. In the same manner, we reflect if our actions bring benefit and happiness to ourselves and others. If it is beneficial, then perform it. Purify the mind. Mental cultivation is an important aspect of Buddhist practice. While good morality is taught in many religious traditions, we need to go further than merely refraining from evil and doing good. We need to address the motivations that lead to our actions. Good actions and bad actions spring from the mind. To avoid performing evil deeds, we need to cultivate wisdom, which is a crucial component of the Buddhist path. And wisdom can be cultivated by following the Noble Eightfold Path that develops a person's moral conduct, purifies his mind, and develops wisdom. No one can do more harm to a person than his untrained mind, which is the source of all unskillful actions. The Buddha gives an analogy of rain leaking into a house with a poorly made roof. Similarly, greed enters the untrained mind. Just as rain does not seep into a well-made roof, greed will not enter into a well-trained mind. A mind that is peaceful and under control will not be a hotbed of anger and resentment. The mind can be cultivated through meditation. In the Buddhist tradition, we have many different meditation practices to produce specific effects such as the removal of a particular negative emotion and the cultivation of positive mental states. One basic meditation technique is the mindfulness of breathing, which is an effective antidote towards to restlessness, anxiety and worry. This meditation method harmonizes and collects the mental energy that can lead to deeper levels of calmness and insight into the nature of things. Another good meditation technique is metta bhavana or meditation on loving kindness. When metta or loving kindness is developed, the radiation of warmth and kindness springs from our emotional fullness irrespective of external circumstances. And loving kindness is the antidote for resentment and anger. It helps in the cultivation of positive emotions, mindful attention, good relationship with others, and physical health. These benefits can be substantiated by scientific research conducted on the practitioners of metta meditation. In the Anguttara Nikaya, the Buddha said that an underdeveloped mind is truly intractable. An underdeveloped and uncultivated mind 
brings suffering. A mind that is untamed, unguarded, unprotected, and uncontrolled brings much harm. On the other hand, a developed mind is truly tractable. A developed and cultivated mind truly brings happiness. A mind that is tamed, guarded, protected, and controlled truly brings great benefit. Therefore, the path for spiritual growth and enlightenment is best captured by the Buddha's simple advice, avoid evil, do good, and purify the mind. This is the essence of Buddhist practice.